Okay, POV. You want an iPad or you just bought one to be more productive, but you just end up watching YouTube and scrolling Instagram. I get it, I've been there. The iPad can seem an attractive purchase, but it's not for certain you're gonna make the most of it. We're gonna change that in this video. Well, after testing every iPad and over 100 apps, I found a setup and a system that actually works to get things done and make the most of whatever iPad you choose. And in this video, you're gonna learn how to choose the perfect iPad for your needs and budget, the exact setup I use to focus how you use your iPad and eliminate distractions, the best apps for each mode, and yes, how to still have fun with your iPad whilst getting things done. Let's turn it from a distraction machine into a productivity and learning powerhouse. And thank you to Skillshare, my favorite app for learning on iPad, for sponsoring this video. Number one, let's help you choose the right iPad without overspending. This is my quick guide to the 2025 lineup and what each model is best for. Now you can find my more in-depth guide to choosing the best iPad on the channel after this, so get subscribed and turn on those bell notifications not to miss it. For any iPad, I recommend getting an Apple Pencil, USB-C for the basic iPad 10th gem, and just commit to the Apple Pencil Pro for the others. And I'd say get at least 256 gigabytes of storage, whatever you go for, 512 gigabytes perhaps for pro users. Now the base iPad, 10th gen as I film from $349 is perfect for students on a budget and basic users with its A14 chip and 10.9 inch screen. It handles notes, readings, and media really well. The upcoming 11th gen though, should likely add Apple intelligence capability and could well be a great bump up option if you can wait. Next, you've got the iPad mini 7 from 499. It's ideal for mobility and a great little pocket device to use the Apple Pencil Pro with. And with that A17 Pro chip and 8.3 inch screen, it's great for note taking and reading, will work with Apple intelligence as the lowest price access you can get. And I think it still feels valuable and distinct from your iPhone for that reason. I feel like it's a super powered Kindle in your hand, but if you want to do a bit of typing on the iPad easily, I'd give this one a miss. That small screen size just limits the keyboard options. Now the iPad Air from 599 offers probably the best value and bang for your buck for most users. It's M2 chip powers more serious creative work, multitasking and Apple intelligence features more effectively. Now I would say to choose the more portable 11 inch unless you specifically need a 12 inch screen. It kind of combines the best of the previous two options and adds a bit more, but you do pay more. Notably bumping up though from that A17 Pro or A14 chip to that much more powerful M series. Now the iPad Pro from 999 showcases Apple's best technology and their biggest hardware flex to date in my opinion. So with the M4 chip, 120 Hertz ProMotion display, ProRes Visio support, and for power users, this is the place to maximize performance. The 11 inch model balances power and portability whilst actually being kind of shockingly lightweight and future-proof. And well, this is the one I went for for the first time to upgrade my iPad since 2018. Honestly, I was absolutely amazed by these when I first tried them. Look at how thin that thing is. It is just ridiculous. It still feels like a peek into the future. Now the combination of the screen quality and the strikingly thin form factor of the iPad Pro, particularly this 11 inch model is remarkable. The Ultra Retina HDR displays are stunning and they are a noticeable leap with that 120 Hertz ProMotion display. Everything feels so much snappier and you gain other benefits like the M4 chip, ProRes video and crazy power for power users wanting to do things like video editing, 3D modeling, and digital artistry. But listen, this is only for you if A, you just want the best and can afford it, or B, you know you have a power use case. Yep, this year, this is the pick of the iPads, and I'm very excited about it. Okay, so you've got your shiny new iPad, but before you dive into the endless TikTok scroll, don't look at me like that, I know. Let's set it up and actually help you focus and make it worth the investment. Now for me, that means finding the right apps and then grouping them using focus modes to minimize your distraction. Now think of focus modes as your kind of, your iPad's sorting hat. It makes sure you're in the right place with the right apps at the right time, even 
if it turns out to be Slytherin. So we're gonna divide your iPad into four distinct modes. And the first, deep work and learning mode. Now having a mode that keeps you focused on the work or learning that moves the needle is the single best way to be intentional about how you use an iPad. And this is one of the key ways iPad is a lot better than a laptop and not trying to replace your laptop for reading and note-taking and interactive learning. Yeah, unless you create or draw, but that's for later on. Okay, set up first. Swipe down from the top right, accessing focus modes from there. Here, you can create new ones and set up specific limits and filters for things like notifications, who can contact you from your list. Now, for deep work, it's only emergency contacts and maybe calendar reminders that we want to allow because, you know, jobs and friendships are just nice to keep. Now you can also then build specific homepage views to show only specific and relevant apps that you want for that mode. For more on how to customize your iPad in this way, as well as make it look like this with my custom icons, check out my other videos in the description and find my minimal design packs and icon packs at bettercreating.com if you like them. Now, social media apps have to stay away from this mode. Only work and learning apps are allowed. So let's add some of my top kind of deep work, note-taking, reading apps for this section and we'll do that for each mode that we cover here but never forget the real trick here is not actually having all of these apps pick two or three that match your workflow and actually learn to use them trust me your bank account will also thank me later because yes a paid ipad app is often worth it kindle for reading GoodNotes 6 has to be the ultimate note taking app with notability being a close second but also these days, particularly with Apple Intelligence, don't forget that trusty Apple Notes app if you want to use those features in a more integrated way. I love using Endel for a focus timer and Pomodoro system as I work and some blissed out AI sounds. Now for a focused typing and writing app, you have to really try out the beautiful and simple Drafts app, iPad app royalty, that one. And since I run my whole life on Notion in my second brain template, I think it's the perfect place to build a custom system that works for you that you can then access quickly and easily to do work on the iPad. But I would do that with dashboard widgets to Notion so you don't get lost in your other pages like to-do lists. So this is a great mode to explore one of iPad's best features, split screen mode, dragging a second app into place to allow you to take notes as you read or take a class online is a fantastic option to keep lifelong learning alive in a very enjoyable way. And so this is also where I keep my go-to learning and personal development app, today's sponsor, Skillshare and their app is single-handedly making the iPad a powerhouse for getting things into my brain. Now, if you haven't heard of Skillshare, where have you been? It is the largest learning community online for creatives and people wanting to learn new skills with thousands of classes in productivity, digital art, and more. So whether you want to master Procreate as a digital artist on the iPad, fast track to a better approach to a creative business or improve your time management and organization, there is something for you. In fact, you can do that last one with my own part-time productivity class on Skillshare. Now, personally, with my recent focus on making my time off a little bit more balanced, I've been really enjoying this class from Jules Acri called Chaos to Calm Google Calendar Workshop for creatives. She shared a bunch of inspiring approaches to better time blocking and planning your week in Google Calendar, which is great on iPad. And I quite like using the split screen mode to do this and adjust my own calendar while I watch the video. And I love that I can find some of my favorite authors alongside other experts and independent creators. This class from Essentialism author Greg McEwen on simple productivity was a great find to brush up on what to focus on to get more done. So make sure to go and check out Skillshare. The first 500 of you who click the link in the description will get one month free on Skillshare so you've got nothing to lose. Start practicing your productivity and your creativity today. Focus mode number two is all about organization. I'm gonna call this admin and comms mode. This is a nice option to contain your email app of choice, messaging, and maybe some key socials like LinkedIn in one homepage. iPad is also a great option for managing your calendar as we've seen, where you can drag and drop items to your heart's content. For the setup, this is a great mode to explore one of iPad's other great features for larger models, Stage Manager. Now you might find in admin mode, you need to jump between apps more rapidly. So turning on Stage Manager is great for this, and you can even consider plugging it into an external monitor like I did here to really take this to the next level with a keyboard and mouse. For example, I can plan my week with my calendar, my email, and my Notion to-do list all open at once. 
Now there are a bunch of great organization apps for the iPad. I personally still use Notion on it because it's where I organize everything as my main productivity app. And Notion I think are getting pretty close, I suspect, to supporting Notion Calendar on the iPad and Notion Mail when it releases. Either way, with the right workspace design, I think Notion is a great organization and knowledge hub. Personally, I love using things like quick capture buttons on Notion to make the iPad functionality smoother when I'm not on my desktop. So some organizational app mentions. Forest is interesting. Plant virtual trees while you work. Kill the tree if you check Instagram. <laughs> it's basically like guilt tripping you into productivity and I'm not mad about it. My virtual forest is looking sparse this week, but we don't need to talk about that. Now, Things Free is probably the to-do list app for people who've tried every to-do list app. It's so clean and minimal, it'll make you feel organized even when your actual desk looks like a paper tornado hit it. But yeah, it, it's a good one. Focus mode number three for the iPad is creative mode. So when it's time to channel your inner Picasso or Scorsese, your iPad clearly should have a creative focus mode. If you are unsure where to start, jump on YouTube or Skillshare, of course, and find a Procreate drawing class and discover the joy of digital art. Procreate is an amazing app and you kind of have to get it for the iPad. But if you are a creator like me, this mode is essential for getting creative work done. And with the reasonably recent Pro app releases, Final Cut Pro for video editors, Logic for audio creators, and of course, the updated Procreate for artists, iPad is an absolute dream in 2025 for this kind of work. Emails, messaging, and socials take a time out in this mode. Of course, reference apps like Instapaper or Pinterest, I like to keep around front and center because even Picasso needed a bit of inspiration. I also love how iPad can offer some more alternative creative solutions if you look wide enough. My favorites, I love this Orion app which is one of the only things I've found to turn your iPad into a camera monitor using a cheap HDMI capture card. And I'm using this rather cool VESA mount system from ChargeN Pro, which is fantastic for mounting iPads wherever you want them. And with this app called Prompt Smart Pro, I can use the iPad as a teleprompter for recording these videos. It even listens to my voice and pauses when I do. They're both paid for, but I think they're worth it. And last but not least, number four is play mode for when you brilliantly and efficiently get your work done and want to enjoy your iPad for all the other obviously brilliant things it's good for. Watching stuff, a bit of scrolling and playing games. Now I believe in setting a hard stop for work and so this could be a great time to try the schedule focus mode switching settings. You can set up a time at which each focus mode turns on or off. So why not set your iPad to shift to play mode at 6 p.m. and on the weekends? Well, this is obviously the place to drop all of your streaming services of choice, Netflix, Amazon Prime are my choices. Perhaps this would also be the spot for things like Instagram and X if you're still on it. I'm also loving playing games on the iPad and with the new M4 chip and that 120 Hertz ProMotion refresh rate display, it's a really high-end gaming experience now and you can pick some big titles. I love using this Bluetooth 8-bit Doe controller, which is fantastic for iPad and super affordable. Right then, here's your action plan. Make sure you choose the right iPad for your needs, set up those focus modes and put the right apps in the right place, and try some of those workflow tips like split screen and stage manager. But if you want to truly master digital productivity and making the iPad essential in your world, then you'll wanna do a few things next. You've gotta go and check out Skillshare for free for a month. I mean, why not? It's mentioned and linked below. Click on this video for my top iPad accessories to choose from in 2025 or this one down here for my essential guide to doing more with less effort. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.